Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Scion of the Dark House, a Dungeons and Dragons 5th edition gothic horror podcast. Oh, yeah. Since this is a gothic horror podcast, there may be some things that come up to align for some people, such as body horror, violence, blood, talk of abuse and trauma, child endangerment, and other such things. If something comes up to align for you, please take a break. Your support means a lot to us, but so does your mental health. So when we last left our heroes, they had gone up the mountain at Lockjaw and had defeated the hags surprisingly quickly, blasting through them with their various spells. They then raided the hags' domain, finding various things such as a cauldron of plenty that was instantly soiled by Lark throwing the decapitated heads of the hags into the soup that was still in there, as well as a needle of mending and a horse statuette that happened to be an imprisoned magical fey horse that made a deal with Arthur. Upon returning home, the group had a brief moment of respite where Lark was able to return the heads to the Queen of Air and Darkness, as well as everyone was able to have a nice short rest before frost began to form on the windows. Wind began to howl and people began to scream. As the group ran outside, they found practically in their front yard was a zombified mammoth. Riding said zombified mammoth was Kull the Shaman that seemed to have hunted them down and found them. He then immediately caused his mammoth to blow a incredibly cold biting wind at the group, which means I'm going to have to ask you all for a saving throw. It is going to be a constitution, constitution saving throw. Kind of fucking figured. And I'm going to start rolling the damage. Okay, well, I think Arthur failed. He got a 13. Um, do, 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 do. Let me see. Uh, yes, that is a failure. Mm -hmm. And I actually um, roll on Rarix Carrick Sheet. So give me a second. I have to add it. I got a that plus eight is twenty five, and that Rarica, succeeds. Rarica, Rarica. I got a seventeen. That fails. Ah. And what, what did Rarick get? Twenty four. Twenty four. Rarick succeeds. So one moment. Let me. Yeah. It's gonna take a bit. Oh, jazz! Ah. I didn't give you jazz. Where is, what is her saving throw shit? Mm, plus five. Only she has advantage. 22 for Jazz. That succeeds. Nice. So those of you who failed, you are going to be taking 42 points of cold damage. Half to those who succeeded as he absolutely blasts you with a cone of cold. And now I'm going to ask for that initiative roll. That's cool. And you said 42 points of damage? Yes, 42 points of cold damage, if that makes a difference for some reason. For me? I got a, Lark got a 16 on initiative. Ooh, 16 for Lark. First you got a five. First you got a five. Oh my god, I'm so sorry. <laughs> I didn't want to ask because I thought you were figuring things out. I don't know what's happening with my brain right now. Okay. Hang on. Okay, so uh, to, hang on. That was without advantage. Let me roll again. 23 for 23 Arthur. 23 for Arthur. Yeah. Um, right. I kind of figured. Plus two. Okay, and Rarick is a 19. 19. Awesome. Uh, so first up is Arthur with Rarick on deck, followed by Lark. Plus Christ. Okay, so we've got Giant Mammoth Thing and Call the Shaman Ragnar. Mm-hmm. Okay, uh, but we're still inside? 
Uh, you all have stepped out into the front yard. So as you remember, it's a street with all of the houses along it and they all have kind of like walled in front gardens with a gate. So I don't know if you all want to be inside the little fenced in area or if you all will have stepped out into the street or what, I, I will let you all decide mm. where you're placed. Could I take partial cover behind the door? Like the open door? Uh, sure. You can jump like, back oh. and like. If do you think he's orientated, I can still see him. Um, I would say yes. Okay. All right, cool. Then I am going to. I'm just gonna post up right there. Um, because I already took like a shitload of damage. Wait, what just happened? Oh, my uh my damage reset. It didn't. It didn't take it. Oh. Hang on, 42. Indy Beyond can be so finicky sometimes. Okay, there we go. Yeah, I'm less than half HP, so I'm going to show right here. Um, oh my god. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, I stay back. I don't get hit. <laughs> um, Let me see here. We're going to do... What's what's my what's my usual stupid-ass thing that I do? Uh, You generally, as far as I'm aware, you either Hunter's Mark or you Sharpshooter. Yes. You generally <laughs> then get Sneak Attack. Sharp for some reason. Stay. Sharpshooter stay. And then, That's what I was thinking of, yes. And you get a buttload of damage. Yep, so, yeah, let's... Steady aim is the bonus action one. Sharpshooter is the feat. Oh, right. One, plus ten. Plus ten to damage, minus five to the roll. But then you get advantage from steady aim, which mm -hmm. then means... Yep. You get your sneak attack, should you hit, which you probably will... Um, yeah, we're actually going to Hunter's Mark him, though, just in case he decides to, he decides to, I don't know, peace out or something. We're going to Hunter's Mark, and then I'm just going to shoot him with the um, Dragon Wing Bow. I'll study aim next time, but I am going to use Sharpshooter. All right. Okay, so, and <clears throat> there's that guy. Oh my god, that's a low roll. Okay, so total was 23 minus 5 is an 18 to hit. Uh, do, 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 let me... That would hit if... But he casts shield. Because he's a dick. <laughs> Fine. So... That is a miss. All right. Well, fail sauce. Um, <clears throat> at least I didn't use any spell slots. And we'll just have um, what can Jasmine do now? Can she do different stuff? Mm hmm. Well, I guess Jasmine's gonna attack the mammoth because it's kind of um. I don't. I don't think she'd be able to like reach him. Um. So yeah, I guess she'll just run up and. Pounce isn't going to work, so we're just going to do a bite. And that's a... Wait, that's upside down. That's a 20 to hit. <clears throat> uh, do, 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 do. Yep, that hits. Okay. And that is 14 magical piercing. As Jasmine sinks her teeth into this mammoth, Fuck me. It doesn't react. There is n almost nothing there. It's real. But it's almost like biting into a statue. As if this thing isn't undead. It's, it's not alive. It's not undead. It's not a construct. It's not anything. Which is incredibly bizarre. Uh, guys, there's something weird about that mammoth besides the fact that it smells real bad. Interestingly, it doesn't smell as bad as you think it should, mostly because it's cold, and cold prevents you from smelling things as well, and prevents things from scents from settling into fabrics. Fair enough. I'll have to keep my jackets in the freezer. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so I, a rare then, I guess? Yep, it'll it's rare extern. Fireball. Cool. <laughs> um, he's at what level? Uh well I think he still has everything because we we took the short rest. We'll say arcane recovery. Da -da -da. Um 
he wouldn't be able to get sixth or seventh level spells. He would be able to get only up to fifth. Right. Mm, well, then I guess we might as well just use fifth because why the fuck not, right? All right. That sounds like a very rare thing to do. Yes. Okay. Um, and he's going to use a legendary resistance. So half damage. It's still damage. <laughs> like, this is bullshit. Okay, hang on. Let me see what it is. What is it? It it's is not... a lich. Is it six? six? No, three? No. Where is his spells? I think at base level, it's 8d6. Where the fuck? Fireball. Okay, 1d6 for each level above third. It is, yes, 8d6. So that would be 10d6. Yes. And then in half. Yes. Okay, so original roll is 43, so that'd be what, 21? All right. He definitely takes a hit mm -hmm. there as he kind of grunts. I will kill you all one way or another. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh, oh god, he doesn't have anything bonus action at all? No, wizards don't get a lot of bonus action stuff, which is kind of sad. Oh god, yeah, that really sucks. Literally the only thing he can do is what, uses, well he has his port and says reactions, but he doesn't have anything bonus action, damn. Alright, well then I guess he's, uh, I don't know, he's, he's good, because I can't cast any more spells, and you know what, no, Rarick's gonna take cover behind the door too. All right, that is certainly an option. So now it is Lark's turn with Cull the Shaman on deck. All right, I'm going to fly 30 feet into the air to get myself away from everybody else. And give me two seconds here. I need to Google what I can do. Um, Trust how me. much? He's on the back of this mammoth, right? Yes. Okay. How much room is on the back of the mammoth? Um, seeing as how mammoths are slightly bigger than elephants, um, not actually that much. <clears throat> if you're trying to summon Fifi, it, it could probably fit Fifi. Yeah, because Fifi's a medium, not large creature. Yep. Um... Yeah, fuck it. I think I'm going to do... I think I'll do. Mm. I'm just checking. It's been so long since we played. Mm. I don't remember what half my shit does. Yeah, I was literally like, wait, what are my abilities and stuff? Yeah. <clears throat> Okay. All right, I'm going to use <clears throat> a second. Well, mm, that's tempting too. Eh, I'll start off. I'm going to try to, I'm going to use a second level spell slot to mind whip him. Ooh. So I need an intelligence saving throw. And it's only a second level spell? It's only a second level spell. Ooh. Oh. Does a 17 save? Nope. A 17 does not. Nice. So he's gonna... He is not gonna use a legendary resistance. So we're gonna roll 3d6. He will take seven whole psychic damage. Ooh. I know. And on his turn, he can't take reactions until the end of his turn. So, I mean, he can't, I guess he can't take a reaction on my turn. Um, on his next turn, he chooses whether he wants to move, take an action, or a bonus action. He can only do one of them. Hmm. All right. So he only gets to do one thing on his turn. Then I'm going to quicken an Eldritch Blast. So, cool. A classic. Yeah. 
quickening eldritch blast because why not oh wait he still has shield up doesn't he it's eldritch blast not magic missile mm -hmm. i know but his ac is a really high now ah oh well we'll try mm -hmm. I mean, you roll ridiculous anyway so yeah yeah so i'm gonna send all three beams at him not the mammoth and ooh, one's a nat 20. Nice. Ooh. So yeah, so, that one definitely hits with your bonuses. There's a with the bonuses, one's a 19 to hit. That does not hit. One's a 26 to hit. That hits. And the last one's a 32. The nat 20. The two hit. Okay. So, so he'll damage take... those. All right. And what are we rolling now? They're D10s, so we'll roll two D10s. So 14 plus 10 off of my agonizing blast is 24, plus the extra 10 for critting is 34 force damage. Ooh. My butt. Ooh. He's definitely starting to hurt. Thank God. <clears throat> so now it is Cole the Shaman's turn. He turns somehow the mammoth, despite the fact that you found it is neither alive nor undead nor a construct, turns in the street, the ground shaking as he begins to scan and he is going to actually make a perception check. The mammoth. He fails. You do not know what he was going to do. He fails, however, he is going to um let me check. He kind of mess up his plan a little bit. Uh, he can only do actions. Um, he's just going to, yeah, he's going to magic missile and he's actually going to magic missile Rarick and he's going to do it at fifth level. So that's what one D four above first, so that's 74. Mm -hmm. All right, 7d4 force damage. Where did my other d4 go? There. Does Rarick have shield? Uh, <laughs> I don't think he does, actually. What? Yeah. Oh, Rarick. Uh, he's, well, he's got counterspell. Can I, can I do that? Is that a thing? You can counterspell. Uh, he'll have to roll it, though, because he's using, Cole's <coughs> using a spell slot above third. So it's, so the DC is, what, 14 then? So I have to roll, what, what do I roll? Intelligence. I roll intelligence or spellcasting modifier? Spellcasting modifier, which is intelligence, because okay. he's a wizard. Okay. And you'll need to beat a 14, or else he'll get hit. Okay. Uh, where the fuck is my... Shit. Oh, wait, no, 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 I didn't add the thing. Oh, that was a 17. That was a 17. Okay, yep, so his okay. magic missile goes down. Counterspell. Woo! Okay. Dave. Ah! Shakes his spear. Um, so next up is Percy with Arthur on deck, going back up to the top. Fuck this guy. Cool. <clears throat> Uh, so it's just call the shaman on a mammoth. There's no other targets, right? Nope. Cool. So Percy's gonna, um, I don't know. I'd imagine because this is happening like 
in the street in front of my house. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. I'd imagine my family has like a yard with like a wall or a fence or something. Yeah, it's like a it's like a waist high stone wall. It's around every single garden sure. in, in the front of all the houses with a lovely little gate in front of it. Yeah, I want to do whatever I can to get some sort of cover here. <laughs> yeah, if you crouch, um, you'll get yeah, like I three crouch, quarters cover. Can... <laughs> and so while I'm like uh, hunched over the thing, I'm going to cast... A little spell. I'm gonna cast, uh, conjure celestial. God damn it! Oh, um, yeah, you did <laughs> have that spell. <laughs> I, I do have that. that spell now. So I'm gonna summon a coaddle. Um, Ooh, okay. So you all watch me do some religious mumbo jumbo, and then out of a little portal that I summon, a huge, gigantic, winged serpent flies out. Um. And all right. that's all Percy can do on his turn. <laughs> um, but then I think it becomes the Coatl's turn. Or do I need to roll yes. initiative for it? <laughs> okay. No, we've we've ruled that summons go immediately after the summoner's turn cool. just to keep from having to roll and keep track of all of that. Awesome. So it is the Coatl's turn. So the Coatl like hisses and then <laughs> flies towards the, the mammoth and I'm going to have it use its constrict attack on the mammoth. Um, so I make a weapon attack, adding plus uh, six to it. Is the mammoth medium or smaller? No. Yeah, it it's oh, large. Oh, damn. <laughs> yeah. I didn't read that. Yeah. Instead... Can... <laughs> uh, call the shaman. He's going to constrict call the shaman. Call the shaman, yeah. <laughs> All um... right. That, add a six... That's going to be a 19 to hit. Wow, dude. Uh, yep, that hits, because I don't think he can use his reaction at the moment. Cool. Because um, of the Tasha's mind whip. And now I roll He can use his reaction. He gets it back at the end of his turn. Oh, so we would have that. Yeah, and you said you rolled a 19 on I that did. attack? Cool, shield. <laughs> He's not being constricted. God damn it. It, it! it flutters around him and hisses angrily. <laughs> yeah, all right. What are the neighbors the doing? Of... Like, I'm wondering, like, when... <laughs> uh, people like... are terrified <laughs> and running. Like, this is, like, the third time that I'm... Yeah, it's been a bad Percy's few lawn. weeks for Darkmoor. <laughs> yeah. Oh, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> It's been real bad for infrastructure. <laughs> now there's just a fucking dragon and a and a goddamn zombie elephant running around the town. Yeah, you're fairly sure you see some corpses up the road of like people that just died in the wake of this f- sudden freeze that happened. Um, all right, so it is Arthur's turn. Rip. As you are preparing. You feel, as you reach, presumably for your quiver, you feel the second iron arrow that you have oh, sweet. begin to heat up, and you get a feeling, many, many tiny feelings, saying, mm. it's time. Oh, God, it's time, bro. Mm, so ready. Okay. Well, then we're going to... I know. Bitch. Oh god, I, I don't remember how much damage it does. It does a shit ton of damage. Um, the, the iron arrow? Yes, it does. That's that's why you that's why you got it. It's an arrow of lich slaying with oh show the common it, show the common <laughs> show the common <laughs> call the shaman's name on it. It yeah. literally has his name on it. So okay, cool. Well, then I'm gonna fire that out in my bow. Um, with sharpshooter steady game. Awesome. If okay, I can... that is a 28 to hit. That hits. Mm-hmm. Sure does, homie. Yep. Sadly, you did not get a crit, but that's fine. Whatever damage you have... Mm-hmm. Oh, you had advantage, so you get... Um, sneak attack? Sh- sneak attack. Yes. So after you roll all of what you need to roll, uh huh, roll me 6d10. Oh, okay. 
That's why I said it it does a shit ton of damage. <laughs> then there's Hunter's Mark. Uh okay, I think that's everything. All right, so you said roll it, then plus six d10. Yeah, roll all of your damage, and then roll six d10 and add that to the total. And it's just going to be magical piercing damage because it's coming from your bow and it's a magic arrow. Okay, seventy four magical piercing damage. That is so lucky. That is one <laughs> point over what you needed to kill him. Are you serious? Yes, he had. You left him on seventy three hit points. <laughs> so you That's shoot. Awesome. So how would you like to do this? Um, let's say let's say he does it kind of badass. Like I don't know. Like he he really like feels the arrow like heating up. He decides he's gonna like abandon his post by the door and. Let's do some kind of ninja parkour shit where like, we like run up the mammoth's leg and then like shoot him in the side of the head. You know what? I'll allow it. You leap yeah. over the garden wall onto the mammoth and shoot him directly between the eyes. You do get momentarily blinded as the holy light explodes, call the shaman. Bones go everywhere. Fur goes everywhere. The tatters okay. hail down. As the mammoth sags, the light going out and tips over as you ride it to the ground and it slams, shaking the earth. And Call the Shaman is no more. There is only one chain of Theris Dune left somewhere in the world. Guys, I think it's dead. <laughs> <laughs> Looks like it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Do you want to help me get down from here, though? The mammoth is on its side at the moment, <laughs> so it's pretty well, easy to get off it. I'll just slide down on my butt then, just like a kid going down the stairs. Well, um, I, I guess I'm glad that it it was handled <laughs> efficiently. Uh, yeah, who do we call about massive corpse disposal? Yeah. Um, I don't really... Would it fit in the bag? No. <laughs> Tusk? Can we take mammoth tusks? Wait, are they real? Yeah, they're real. They're going to turn into vapor as soon as we cut them off? No. It's, it's, it's a real what, mammoth. What it was just... the thing we grabbed and it, like, crumbled? Th oh, that the, was the staff. The staff. It, was the, yeah. it was the staff, and that's why someone has, like, 800 gold worth of pearl dust somewhere pearl in a dust. bag. Because <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> it exploded. Um, cool. Okay, well, I'm on a mammoth tusk. I don't know why. Like, I just do. All right. Uh, make me, I guess, a sleight of hand check. Cool. I'm good at this. That would be the best. Either that or a medicine check. Uh, 19. All right. After a few minutes, you manage to saw off uh, both of the tusks. You now have two mammoth tusks, which will fit in the bag. Sweet. You just have to be careful not to poke the inside of the bag with them. Okay. My dexterity is pretty good. I think I can handle that. Yep. Okay, cool. Mammoth tusks. So I've got mammoth tusks. <laughs> At this point, uh, many people have begun to come out into the street and sort of gather around and look. The air is beginning to warm up. Snow has stopped falling. The frost is melting from the windows. Thank God. At this point, I would say that uh, your mother and father, Percy, do step outside of the door a bit trepidatiously. I'm not even going to ask at this point. Yeah. Ms. Mrs. Uh, this is one of the chains of there's Dune and you, only you one left. <laughs> rake. A rake? No. I, well, do you want to rake up the mammoth? <laughs> I thought maybe I, or shovel. I'm just gonna like use a sending spell. I'm <laughs> sure I've met like the captain of the guard or something at some point in this misadventure it's and, sure. or we'll some high ranking guard and I'll be like hey Rob uh, big uh, dead 
Mammoth and Lich uh, in front of my house. Uh, it's Percy. Oh, I'm um, gonna. Uh, thanks. <laughs> and you <laughs> just, awful. after a moment, you just hear back, oh, and I was having such a good dream. <laughs> and then that's it. It's probably going to take maybe like 45 minutes to an hour and a half for this to co- to kind of get together because this is like three in the morning. Yeah. 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 <clears throat> so it's going to take a bit before they can get a task force over to your house to deal with the mammoth. <sighs> so who's for whiskey? Huh? I'm going to try to like look over Cole's body and see if anything interesting is there. Uh, so there is a lot of bits everywhere um he is spread out over a 30 foot radius from where the um oh he got the mammoth fell he's gonna mage hand the pieces back together (laughs) the only thing of interest i will say is a non-magical spear it is a spear with a flint tip um lashed together with a very rudimentary sort of primeval sort of twine made from some sort of like rush or reed to a stick that's the only thing of interest i mean there are little bone fragments you're not sure if they're the sort of little skulls of animals that were or the teeth or or other things on his fur coat or the pelts that he was wearing which also was blown up and there's only tiny bits and pieces and scraps everywhere um I will just. What's wrong, um, Mark? You can't find any bits of face. Oh, I wouldn't want to eat his face in the first place, Arthur. No, oh, fair enough. Not exactly a looker, that one. Yeah, um, really it's pretty easy. It's okay. I'm gonna collect some of the small animal skulls and throw them in my jar of tea. For snacks. Yeah. <laughs> uh, snacks. Yeah, if you want, you can roll me two d four and just add two. Just see how many fragments you're able to find. Oh my god. So that's eight total. All right, so you find eight little bits of skull that are obviously little animal skulls, and you can stick them in your jar of teeth. Liches are undead, yes? Yes. I forgot. I have advantage against all of his spells and abilities. Oh. (laughs) I literally forgot the past two battles because I wasn't thinking of undead because it was like big bad, you know. Oh, yeah, yeah he's so undead. I wasn't thinking, like, well, I'm re- good thing. Well, you'll remember next time because you still have one of these motherfuckers to kill. Yeah. Um. So, as you all are standing out and doing that, um, people begin to go back inside, as well as, of course, your mom and dad decide to go back inside. Just we'll deal with it in the morning and just walks back in. At this point, there's actually movement in the mammoth corpse. Oh, fuck. Shoot it. Shoot it right now. The fur lifts, and underneath of it, very strangely, are two wooden posts, almost making them into a canopy. Within the rib cage, there doesn't seem to be a rib cage anymore. It's a flat stone wall with a door in it, and hanging off of it is a sign, the cuddly oh, rat. For fuck's sake. <laughs> this motherfucker. <laughs> the door opens, and of course, a very familiar proprietor comes out and sweeps. <laughs> you know, your before... timing is awful. Oh. Is it? Um, <laughs> come in and into the mammoth goes into he backs a, into the uh, yeah, he goes into the mammoth. Uh, are we fine? I don't have anything better to do. Lark's just gonna pick up the spear too and be like, he'll probably want this for some god's awful reason. Okay, here we go. <laughs> so you head in, and it is a very familiar interior still cluttered and with random new things in various places it's somewhat of a different arrangement but it's ever so familiar as the cuddly rat that you all know and love as he's dawdling around with various things in his hand rearranging them and dusting 
It's so, so like trippy now that I know where he came from. Like I can't. <laughs> I um, love this. How are you? How have you been, Mr. Rat? Oh, he never knows the answer to that. Things I'm just trying happened. to have some sort of formality. I don't things have ha- things have happened. Things have happened. <laughs> yes. He's not wrong. <gasps> oh. I have things. And he turns and he runs and you hear him rattling and smashing through things. And he comes out with an armload of stuff wrapped in a sort of um, cloth. Sometimes and he unrolls it. Same conversation, whether we were here or not. <laughs> <laughs> he sort of unrolls this um, sort of roll of fabric out and there's a bunch of items inside. Ooh. Ooh. and he let's look yes um, he picks up a beautiful looking flail it is made of gold and the head of the flail almost looks like a cathedral in itself an octagonal cathedral with this sort of mesh and on the inside seems to be a very familiar sort of incense burner and of course, he walks over to you, Percy, and I think you might like this. Oh, um, it's, it is beautiful. Yes. I don't remember where I got it. I don't remember a lot of things. Um, I'm sure. <laughs> well, th- thank you, Mr. Rat. I, I appreciate it. Right. More things. Um, and he goes back. <laughs> um, and he pulls out a pair of bracers. Ooh, shiny. And he walks over to you, Lark, and he hands them. I think these would work rather well with you. They're quite fun. Oh, thank you. They are very beautiful bracers. They are rather large in your hands. It's almost like you're holding two beer steins in your hand. They're so large. Um, But he kind of, oh. And he reaches out and he touches them. And he kind of shakes them back and forth. And as that happens, two images appear floating. You recognize these. They, they're very similar to um, a minor illusion. Um, and they seem to not, they don't quite take a shape, but they both happen at the same time, which is weird because usually items like this only do one at a time. But there's two of them. Yes, quite nicely. More firepower. <laughs> what, 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 are, what, what are they? They're a gift. Just say thank you. Thanks. I don't remember. Uh, here. I'm going to hand him the spear and be like, oh, I got this for you too. It's very vintage. <laughs> oh, yes. Very That's vintage. <laughs> I don't know why I was waiting for you to lick it. He strangely doesn't lick it. You expect that he would, but he doesn't. Like, the face that you were making said, I'm going to lick this. (laughs) I don't know why. I didn't didn't even know that. Anyway, so he just kind of puts it on a random rack with a bunch of other spears. Ooh, what else do we have? <laughs> this. And he pulls up this like golden sort of astrolab kind of looking orb, almost like a gyroscope of some kind. Many rings that have been spun outward into a sphere. And he waddles over. Let me see your book. And he uh, does this to Rarick. Mm-hmm. Uh, who kind of um sure and he holds out the book the proprietor then 
flicks this sphere and all the rings and it becomes a flat disc that he places on top of the book. Little latches dig into the leather as almost an iris opens in front of the book. And as you look, it seems to be a field of stars inside, almost as if it's a window to space before it shuts <clears throat> and the book grows about an inch in height, in thickness, gaining more pages. Cool. Yes. Ooh, that's actually Ooh. funny. I like that. Ah, <gasps> you have the bow. The bow that's so important. Right. And he reaches out and he touches the bow. That's okay. And the string glows. <laughs> the dragon figurines seem to twist and grow. At first they were just the heads, but now they push outward. Hands grow out and they seem to grip little orbs. Oh my. They also grow wings that then spread up and over the ends of the bow and your bow almost grows about six inches. It's almost as tall yes. as I am. You know? Yes. I don't remember a lot of things, but I do remember this. <laughs> I wish That's... I could remember more things. Nice. Like my name. Jeez, to... Arthur, is that a new bow or are you just happy to see me? Oh, you know me. <laughs> <laughs> um, thank you. Thanks. Yes. Oh, <gasps> nope, never mind. Oh. And he kind of smells the air. He seems a little bit more animated than usual, less spacing out, which is interesting. Okay, um, wait, above game, what is his name? I can't remember. I don't remember. <laughs> What's the teacher's name? Laurent Dumont. Lauren Dumont. That's what his name was. Okay, yeah. Should we? I I mean, I feel kind of bad. Like, should we tell it? He's not going to remember it. It's fine. Oh, yeah. It's, he seems happy. I think. Right? He'd Mr. probably Red? be miserable if he wasn't insane. I, well, you've got a point. Um, your name is Rat. Oh, it, it, that it, makes sense. Right. That's why, because on the shop, it says that. Yes. Oh. Is this our first or 30th? How many times have we met you so far? Many times. Oh. And at this point, you watch as it's a smoother transition this time. The feathers come out, the beak grows, his talons grow out as he reveals his were-raven form. And just, we've met many times. Mm, only the once like that, though. Oh. Oh, well. Mm. You have two dragons with you. Are you talking about these? <laughs> he, like holds the bow up. That's one. There's the other. Um. Clark Does motions anybody know what he's talking about? <laughs> yeah, like, is it that no, one? not that one. No. <laughs> um. A a small one, like a tooth. It smells like a tooth. Ew. Is it in my jar of teeth? What, are, what is he talking No. You, you do remember you did receive a tooth from a certain character that visited previously. Uh, you pulled it off his body. Was I well, there for that? Body. Oh, it's... Oh, fuck, what's his face? Oh. Yeah. The disintegrated paladin. We yeah. took his tooth and his horn. Yeah, what's his what's his face? Bruno. Bruno. The one we don't talk about. <laughs> Mark's gonna be like, oh, you mean this tooth? I keep it in my jar of teeth at the bottom. 
Oh. And he takes it, assuming you're giving him the little tiny tooth. Work yeah, I mean, it's, like honestly... a little, it's like a tiny, it's like a weirdly tiny drinking horn. And he takes it and <laughs> grows up to the size of a regular drinking horn. Ooh, this one's fun. Um, and he kind of sloshes it. Hmm. Could be ale. Could be olive oil. Shakes it. Could be potion of climbing. Hmm. Okay. I mean, climbing's never really been a concern of mine. They're very different things. <laughs> well, if you'd like to keep it, you can. If not, I have a buyer for this. <laughs> um, well, I mean, I, I'm not pretend. That's your, it's your tooth, Lark. I don't know. It seems like you probably can't eat it anymore. I mean, honestly. Tuttle's over there is the one who killed him in the first place, so I don't really mind. <laughs> Ooh. And he sets it. It's weird. It's almost like this place has, like, these holders that are just out, perfectly made for these items. Mm -hmm. But it's the first time he's ever seen these things and he's excited about it. And he sets it directly in the sort of thing that holds up a drinking horn. Yep. You may like this. I can trade for it. And he holds up a key. It's a black key where the sort of place that you hold to turn it in the lock is like a labyrinth. Hmm. And he kind of holds it up. I don't know what it does, but there's a lot of magic. And this one he does kind of... Aha! I knew he was going to do it. <laughs> It's magic. <laughs> and then he gives you the key. So now you have a key. Yeah. We'll just put this away for now. Yeah, don't eat that. Why would I eat it? I No, not you. Well, <laughs> you too. <laughs> it's a key. It's not I don't, food. I don't know who needs to hear this, but don't eat that. Do we know what yeah. this key is for? No. He'll probably tell All us right. weeks ago. It's for something. Sure. I'll I'll take the key. <laughs> I'll so bet I guess... you would unlock something. I would wager that. <laughs> Most likely. He's in yeah. the noggin. I think that's everything. Uh you just brought us in here to give us stuff and do yes. what you did to my bow? Yes. Oh. Okay, well, um, thank you. He just right. kind of begins to wander around and start dusting things again. Well, I mean, if we don't see you, I'll see you the next time we see you. Hopefully the world hasn't ended by then. It might. It could. I've seen Oh, okay. No, I couldn't. I'm starting to feel really bad. I'm not going to take this stuff. He says as he's like walking out the thing. I guess we're all just kind of walking and he's just like, yeah, that's kind of sad. I'm just slip. So he he made the bracers like, are they my size now? They will be once they attune, once you attune to them. Okay, yeah, I'm going to start. I'm uh, going to say that once you all leave, Rarick offers to ritually cast um identify on them what rarick what mm. these do <laughs> so yours are the if i can get the book out this one they are the bracers of the illusionist which are actually really ridiculously good i am in the creature section not in the item section why am i in the creature section and not in the item section Sorry, Illusionist's Bracers. Um, 
While wearing the bracers, whenever you cast a cantrip, you may use a bonus action on the same turn to cast on the same turn to cast that cantrip a second time. Oh. So I don't have to spend spell slots to quicken Eldritch Blasts anymore. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Or all my sorcery points. Oof. Of course, Percy, you have received the Devotee's Censor, of which I know you had the information of because I took it away from you early in the campaign. <laughs> Um, I'm already on mine. I, I see it. Yep, you have Freaking the insane. Awakened Crypt Bane. Um, Rarick has received an Astromancy Archive, which goes along with his mm-hmm. Arcane Grimoire, which is now a plus two yep. Arcane Grimoire. Um, I should also say, Percy, I know your Amulet of the Devout is only plus one, so it has also become a plus two. Oh, neat. Uh, of course, Lark, your Bloodwell Vial has become a plus three because I forgot I gave it to you at a plus two. Um, uh-huh. And oh, weirdly, the key, Rarick cannot identify. It is magical. <laughs> it is powerful. Hmm. But he cannot identify it. You want to try looking it? <laughs> no? All right, nothing. Yeah. <clears throat> uh, you can't tell what it is, you say? <laughs> weirdly, no. That's super um, it's weird. powerful. Um, it was almost like when I tried to identify your bow, and nervous. it it was just there were things outside of the periphery of what I could see. Huh. Just like your bow, how I could only see a tiny fragment of what it could do. This key is similar. I, I know it can do amazing things, but I can't see what they are. It's a pinpoint of light in the middle of an empty room. Hmm. Fascinating. Um, all right, well, I guess uh, it's it's still past three in the morning, so like we'll just deal with that later. Yeah. Um, preferably after the sun is up. I feel like maybe, uh, is anybody else for going back to bed? Because, uh, yeah. Yeah, maybe. yeah I'm gonna uh, go back to bed. I'm pretty fucking beat. I took a, took a pretty big chunk out of it. And you all have a lovely long rest. No <laughs> disturbances. You wake up around maybe, at this point, probably around 11. Um, there is definitely still people outside your house picking over the street. Um, it has, the mammoth has been removed as well as all of the bone fragments and various other fragments. Um, there were people definitely called in to help. It was giant. Um, but the mammoth is gone from outside of the street as well as the various other corpses of people that froze uh, in the freeze of the lich coming. Um, but the day is yours and you can do whatever you like with it. Hmm. Um, well, I think Arthur's probably like, I don't know, hanging hanging in the backyard for a little bit. Let's say after breakfast, he and Jazz are gonna like play around with a new bow or something, you know, see 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 what it's doing. He's like fucking around with it. Let's let's say uh early early afternoon maybe so he comes comes back in after about an hour and you see him like all singed and shit like uh i I figured out what he um i figured out what he did well good i'm glad what what does he do to it what does it do now um uh it breathes fire now which is fun I don't wish you would have told me that. 
like soot just coming out of it. <laughs> so <laughs> yeah, above game it my bow now basically does like a breath weapon. It's an eight d six cone. Oh. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Pretty cool. Oh, 30 foot cone, actually. Holy oh, shit. Oh, yeah. It's a 30 foot cone. So you the probably hear your mom, Percy, you probably hear your mom from upstairs go, just you hear her from her bedroom, just, my tree! And you smell <laughs> smoke. <laughs> the tree is definitely burnt <laughs> from that 30 foot cone of flames. Yeah. Ugh. Sorry. Oh. We really need a better base of operations than my parents' house. Well, we you have your other house. The haunted one? Yeah. Real chill vibes over there. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, as long as you don't go into the basement. Or most of the other rooms. There is the carriage house, which is not much bigger than this house, but mm. plenty of yard space. You and <laughs> that are living. Well, um... I'm sure Percy has just spent most of his morning praying and being a good little cleric and looking at his new toy. And um, uh, once the group has gathered, I think I'll just be like, well, that's two chains of fairs doing down, one left. Yep. Um, Isn't the last one off in his own miniature dimension or something? Yes, says a voice as Belladonna just strides into the room from nowhere. Oh, uh, you know, she was not in the kitchen previously within the last 15 seconds, but she just walks out of the kitchen as if nothing happened. Yes, uh, he is in his own domain. Um, which is a problem uh, because, of course, lots of magic domains locked. Um, there is apparently a way to get in from the point of oh. his betrayal and she takes a map and unrolls it where she has a single point marked it is over the border of uh Gothia, about maybe 20 miles into caliburn there's a small village called borges hmm. that she points to that is where his last um, cathedral was dedicated to him. And that was the point of his betrayal. I was only able to find that there is a way to get in there. However, I have no idea what it is. All right. Um, so is this going to be more of a we go and find out when we get there situation or? Isn't Are we that... heading to a library now to figure out what to do? I have searched so many libraries. You have no idea. Oh, I've been right. to libraries you probably haven't even heard of, and I still haven't found the answer. Yep. There's more than one. In the the magic school? I thought that was oh, only no, library. I'm talking about a city made entirely of crystal off in the in the Astral Sea. Hmm. It's weird. It, it has Naturally. a lot of... Naturally... <laughs> creatures made of ooze. I don't know why they need books. But anyway, I still haven't found the answer. All right. Seems like a closely guarded personal secret. Well. Best I can say is go there. Can I... Do we think perhaps we could make use of a teleportation circle or are we just going to be hoofing it? <laughs> um, Probably hoofing it. Um, because Porte de Marchand, she points to another point on the map, which is like maybe 75% of, if you measure it out, it's only like a quarter shorter of a journey. That's the only magic school that I know for a fact has a teleportation circle. Um, similar thing with the place of government. Um, over here, they are practically equidistant. Yeah. Right. Is anybody paying us for this shit? What are? Do we not? Well, uh, 
I I feel much the same, but um, I'm I'm still more worried with uh the world ending at the moment. Uh. So um, maybe we can circle back to that with the church or something. <laughs> world ending forever. It has. Um, now, right. Other so... problem is I would take you if my cloak wouldn't only take myself. It's right. a very I frustrating think, limitation. Yeah. And I can only go from here to the Astral Sea and then navigate the Astral Sea to find the place that it connects to in the Material Plane and then hop back there. Right. It's right. quite annoying. That's, yeah, that's um, quite enough of that. Fine. We'll go, right? We're going. Every, we're going. Right? We don't have much of a choice. Yeah, so I, can... I guess it's time to get a carriage together. Obviously. Great. I do have a route marked. And she kind of draws sort of a, a line. This road here, um, it does avoid a lot of major towns and major cities, but that's just because it extends the journey by quite a bit. Um, it does go through a famous battlefield. It was, uh, which is apparently haunted, but that's the best I could do. Um, oh, we don't mind some. What's a little bit of undead between friends? Absolutely nothing, me. Yeah, there's been a lot of that. Um, so yeah, where does the route go through? <laughs> so yeah, you, be you fine. see... Take out some of the undead blight on the way there. It actually does head kind of in the opposite direction. It doesn't even go back towards Gravesend or um, Gallows or anything like that. It just goes clean in the opposite direction towards the border. Just beeline for the border. Um, and there are no towns and no cities. Hmm. All right. Well, um, at any rate, before we embark, I'm dangerously low on feline sedatives. So, uh, <laughs> market wouldn't be terrible. We really need to work on just getting teleportation circle set up in places i'm oh man i'm tired of traveling <laughs> y'all are the magic people it's the wizard's business well the church doesn't do that no the church doesn't do that okay <laughs> sure last priest we met created his entire own dimension no teleportation circle <laughs> <clears throat> Well, um, womp, womp. do we think your horse friend might be willing to pull our carriage? <laughs> uh, I don't think one horse is going to pull all of us. Probably going to need two. I mean, you could put the horse and Jasmine pulling us. Absolutely not, Jasmine. Dude, that's not going to work. Why? Well, for one, she's only 90 pounds, so <laughs> she's not pulling very much. And two... Did you forget about the last time I put her in a vehicle? I don't want to put her in charge of a vehicle. Oh, whatever you say. Uh, yeah, exactly. Thank you. I'm glad we're on the same page. Well, all right. Um, to the market? To the market. We, Let's make some preparations. She said there's no, there, there's nothing on the way there. Like, we're going to need, yeah. we're going to need you know? Yeah. How long is this trip? Um, let me see. Probably like about like a day's journey. We're we talking four, like, like around three, three and a half. Oh yeah. Okay. Definitely needing food. Yeah. Cause even your, your cathedral that you can like summon out of nowhere doesn't come stocked. Does it? Yeah. I think it does. It's literally just the building yeah yeah i think it is literally just the building well shelter we're covered so yeah food supplies kitty sadago and i guess we're renting some horses or a carriage or something yep do we wait do we have a carriage no i don't think we own one though but we can i think one. you've just been abandoning your carriages in various spots around yeah Zodiac. we did just abandon <laughs> abandon that carriage in lockjaw or whatever yep. 
their carriage uh, now. <laughs> I mean, maybe we, maybe we go to a different carriage, carriage rental service this time. So yeah, we abandoned <laughs> the carriage because you had a teleportation spell. Yeah. So well, yeah, you, you drive to the spots, carriage. abandon the vehicle, and then teleport back. Yeah, we so usually did actually. actually. Single-handedly supporting the new cart building economy. Yeah. Each Why cart do they lost? keep renting to us? <laughs> <laughs> like <laughs> okay well well we've only known that once because the only other time we teleported us back was from gypsia and we teleported there so <laughs> well lark can fly jasmine can run um Rarick can fly you and i can ride to lena i mean i think that would still be quite slow if people are Flying. <laughs> and also Rarick only unless he's spending spell slot after spell slot after spell slot after spell slot. Yeah. It is Oh yeah, that's he right. has ten oh, minutes so. of fly. Okay. Well I think okay. the only person who has Lark is the only one with a consistent fly speed. I know yes. you still have your winged boots, but that's only eight hours. Yeah. And it's still only like a regular movement speed. So yeah. Yeah. right. Well, yeah, that's right. I mean Technically, you like that. Well, you get exhausted. I get it. Yeah, yeah. Let's get a oh, carriage. Okay, fine. Do we need to role play all of this? Is there any? Is there any no, market stuff? No, I wasn't want to going do here, to role play. I wasn't cool. going to role play it. We go get supplies in the, in a carriage. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Just spend like twenty five gold, sure, or so, just How to get many everything. Faces can I buy? Oh God, yeah. none. <laughs> Do I even have any? What do I? What do I have for gold? Twenty-five oh. gold. Oh yeah, I have, I'm pretty decent on gold. Well, the twenty-five gold is for like the carriage rental and the food for all of you. So you only need to mark it off once. I don't need all all four of you marking off twenty-five gold. Oh well, then why don't I just like take off five a piece? Sure. Okay. Yeah. Oh yeah, sure. That's easy. All right. Yep, that seems seems on good. The road. Yeah, cool. Yep. Carriage yep. rental down the road. Hey, mom and dad. Uh, I know I just got back last night. We're leaving. Oh. <laughs> yeah. um, I very, very just briefly guess. just heard Reba McIntyre in my head when you said that. <laughs> Please send money. I'm so broke that it ain't funny. Oh my god, <laughs> that's such a good song. Now I'm gonna have to listen to that when we get off. <laughs> yeah, and you all head out onto the road Darkmoor shrinking into the distance going on to an unfamiliar road to an unfamiliar country to go and do things to find an un another <laughs> unfamiliar land once again and so that is where we're going to end this week's episode join us next week as we find out what is on the road because you know there's something. There always is. There always is. So we will see you all next week. And I will see the rest of you in about five minutes.